Welcome. This is item number six on the newly released spring 2014 test items for the seventh grade math TCAP. The question said a building casts a shadow, well not at night, but anyway, a building casts a shadow that's 120 meters long. At the same time, a flagpole with a height of 15 meters casts a shadow that is 48 meters long. Look on the bright side. At least they gave you all the same units. Everything's in meters, so that's a bonus. Um, so they want to know what the height of the building is. Looking through the problem a little bit, if you saw the video for number four, I think, uh, for item four, I should say, uh, you'll know that I have a little analysis for proportions, which is called the two, three, fourth. And I'm going to change color of my pen because I realize it's not the easiest to see. It's a proportion set up if you have two items, two concepts, two theories, uh, three numbers, and I'm looking for the fourth. So, in this case, do I have two items? Yep. Building flagpole. Do I have three numbers? I do. That's why I thought it was proportion. Generally, my brain goes three, two, four, but, and I'm looking for the fourth one. You'll notice that these are in similar relationships. So there's the building. So I had need to that. And it's got this part, you know, the flagpole's here. So yeah, I'm looking for the fourth one. So proportion time. I'm going to set up a proportion for both the building and one for the flagpole. One of them will be the height and one of them will be the shadow length. So I'll do the one for the flagpole because I already have enough information to do it. I know the flagpole is 15 feet high or meters high. And I make a note to myself that it's height. I do that because later it matters where I put the number. Um, the other part of it is 48 shadow. 48 meters. I'll put an S there to remind me it's about the shadow. Now, also in item four, I talked about the idea that you want to keep like terms on the numerator together or the denominator together based on the idea of using a creating a pet hotel where you keep cats and dogs separate. So put the cats in the top floor or the bottom floor, just don't mix and match. So there you go. I've got the height in the numerator and I've got the shadow in the denominator. The information that I'm given about the building, now that I'm ready to make the ratio over here, the fraction, whatever, is the shadow. It tells me it casts a shadow that is 120 meters long and they give you a picture. So you need to put that 120 meters where shadows go. And in this case, it's on the bottom. That's where they go in real life too. So shadow. See, I'm keeping my cats on the bottom floor here, dogs up top. So the thing I'm looking for is the height. Now I'm ready to do cross products. So I'll just do 48 times x equals 15 times 120, which is 1,800. This is, I'm tr just trying to solve it to get rid of multiply, which is 48 touching x means multiply. I just need to divide and end up with a final answer of uh, 1,800 divided by 48, which is 37 and a half meters. Now, you may be thinking, man, you read out a lot of stuff. Do I need to write out all that stuff? No. Do you need to write out some stuff? Yes. Why do you need to write out anything at all? You could just press things into your calculator and get an answer, right? Like I could just go in basically any time that I want and just start typing numbers in. Sweet. I'll just do um, 48 times x or I'll just leave that one. So I'll do 15 times 120 and then divide by 48. That saves tons of time. Why did you do the other thing? Well, the reason is because I've been teaching for a long time and I know where people make mistakes, which is that they just put the numbers in. So it's in this case, you do multiply the first two numbers by each other and then divide by the third number. But it's very likely that in other problems you won't. Like maybe you do, well, it's 120 times 48. Divide by 15 and end up getting... 384, which is one of the answers. What these answers usually represent is just different combinations of putting the things in different places in the proportion. So do yourself the favor and at least minimum, sorry, scrolled up there, minimum write out this part. 
Why would you do that? So you can get the question right. That way, you, you know, if you're taking a test, you might as well use it to your advantage and do as well as you can. Just putting down anything for no reason makes you look like kind of a goof. You're better than that. So write down that one step, and then do you need to write down this step? Probably not, because the proportion is so simple. You would just find the numbers that are across from each other, multiply them together, divide by this. Do I suggest you write out this step? Yeah, of course. But do you have to? Probably not. So just be careful about how you use your calculator. Don't just go typing in buttons whenever you feel like it. Set up this part on paper, heaven forbid paper is still used, and then put the answer in. You're much more likely to get it correct, and I think it'll you'll end up with better results than you probably would otherwise. So take the time. It's worth it. That's it.